are required to report to their designated quarantine. Riots have continued for a third consecutive day, and winter rations are at an all-time... ...curfews and, and isolating people from, from others to prevent them getting sick. Now, is this a, an effective way of, of keeping populations safe? And it's kind of the opposite of, uh, of maybe a TB hospital. It's the other way around. We're trying to keep the, the healthy people in and the sick people out, rather than the sick people in and the healthy people out. Certainly in terms of, um, like, throughout history, there's been lots of isolation, you know, right back to the 1600s when ships would come to Europe bringing cargo. They would have to go through health authorities and be checked for plague and for other infectious diseases. And, you know, even right through to kind of, you know, the Ebola outbreak in the last few years, isolating infected people, um, you know, is a way of, of managing a situation like that. So... You know, there's certainly room for elements of that in kind of the management of situations like this in terms of something as dramatic as that, you know, when you start looking at kind of imposing quarantine zones and putting people into to areas and, you know, just imposing rules and, and like forcing people into situations, you know, that's when it's obviously going to get a, lo a lot more kind of ethically challenging. <laughs> I think it's it's weird to describe it as a quarantine zone. I know they do in the, in the game, but it's, it seems more the equivalent of in the olden days when you built a, a wall around the town to try and keep sort of marauding outsiders out. Uh, but there's a sense in which well, they can see it isn't fully effective because it's an infectious disease, and it you know whether the spores can move across or it's we get a sense there that uh, that the disease can can survive in sort of damp housing, which I thought um, raised an interesting issue, which you get in a. a a lot with infectious diseases, often people who are who are who are poorest, who who live in the worst housing, who are most affected. There's a sense in which you see sort of health inequalities and, and social inequalities that uh, 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 show through in the in the in the structure who gets infected and by, so by what. So inequality and 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 poverty. But let's think about rationing as well. Maybe there's no food here. Obviously, presumably there's there's difficulty with infrastructure for getting food to people. How do we find that in? Uh, Let's, let's use the word quarantine. A quarantine zone is getting people what they need and the help they require. So how, how would that go about, do you think? I think it would be very difficult because, you know, a lot of that is, is going to be informed by surveillance. Mm. And depending on what societal infrastructure is available to you, there may be some degree or no degree of surveillance. So it's not very clear as to how you would be able to detect kind of, you know, if there was a pocket of people mm. with a particular illness or whether it was spreading very quickly and... Obviously, there's lots of things to consider, like how how virulent the disease is, and how kind of how much how quickly it spreads. Mm. Does it spread from person to person? Is it direct contact? Does do you have to, you know, does someone need to sneeze on you, or is it in the air? Can it be you know suspended in in the air? So I think you know there's lots of things to consider in terms of finding out more about the disease and finding out more about its spread and its transmission mm. before you're able to really adequately kind of allocate a response plan to that if there's even any infrastructure to be able to do that mm. really so i think a lot of it is about kind of that surveillance element and finding out the information and managing with the resources that that you do have mm. i mean how how would we cope then how would the government cope if we had to lock everything down is is there a, a plans in place for that is, is that sort of thing does it exist well, I guess we did it into the Second World War, but maybe the world has changed so so much since then that you know, that maybe the the underlying sense of solidarity that people had, or that was generated by the Second World War, which enabled the rationing to carry on afterwards. People some grumbling, but sort of seeing that that was a, mm. a something fair. I'm, I'm not quite sure whether you know what would happen if we, if if there was a big d disaster and you know somebody tried to institute rationing, and you could imagine you know. A successor of Cameron saying we're all in this together <laughs> and nobody mm -hmm. really quite believing anymore and so to have any sort of system of rationing it depends on a really strong social solidarity the idea that despite the fact that nobody has enough that somehow people see that it's fair and people aren't gaming the, sis mm. the system you come through here half hour ago he went back to the wharf he's there now <laughs>